In June 1983, a new British computer was unveiled. In the months that followed, it was hailed as a triumph, a unique business machine, one which has certainly been designed to fulfill the needs of a large and growing sector of the world market. What also made it unique was the speed with which it was created and the way it has already become a classic illustration of the business approach which over the years has made its manufacturer the United Kingdom's leading microcomputer company. When applied computer techniques took the decision to start manufacturing a 16-bit micro, it had already been in the computer business over a decade. In that time, the company had demonstrated constantly its skill in identifying the changing needs of the market and how those needs could be best serviced. It had also demonstrated a remarkable management track record. ACT's 12 most senior managers have all been with the company throughout the last 10 years. ACT was established in 1965 as a bureau service, developing software to serve its clients' particular and individual needs. By the end of the 70s, recognizing the potential of the new micros to the business user, ACT turned its attention to software for the versatile 16-bit microprocessors being developed in the United States. By 1981, ACT knew that the time was right to bring to the UK market the 16-bit business micro Sirius 1. Sirius was indeed a turning point in the company's history, but it came following two previous phases of development. The first phase, when we were a computer bureau, was the phase in which we built a management team. In the second phase, the added value items, the software, the printers, the supplies, items, and maintenance were all added to the company's products. So this was a foundation, a very strong foundation, on which to build. How successful did Sirius become? Well, I think the foundation was very solid and assisted us in getting the Sirius product to being the number one in the UK. But didn't such rapid success put strains on the company resources? Remember, we're already a public company, and it is part of our fundamental policy to have no borrowings and substantial cash balances. By November 1983, monthly shipments of Sirius had reached 1,500 units, but the foundations for the success of the total computing concept were already well laid. In the five years to 1982, group turnover had quadrupled. In the same period, profits before tax had increased almost fivefold, but Sirius heralded a new era in the development of the company. Within the ACT group, Pulsar has become the UK's leader in 16-bit software. The company now dispatches 4,000 major business packages a month. But what you want to do is to take the first figure, whether it be a one or a two. ACT also operates a comprehensive technical support service for the company's extensive network of dealers. Right, so you do actually use one of the ACT printers. Fine, right, have you been through the install? ACT's commitment to its dealers is a crucial part of the total computing concept. End users today are becoming far more sophisticated. They are buying computers to solve particular problems. So in an instance of buying a system, they first choose software and then the computer upon which they wish to run it. With Pulsar, we offer a complete range of systems to give the user a complete choice. By 1983, the company's growth pattern had changed gear dramatically. From a base of a little over 2 million in 1978, ACT Group had increased turnover and profit by a factor of 10, much of that in the 12 months following the launch of Sirius. In 1979, ACT had seen one of the most successful ever stock market flotations. Four years later, the new public company stands capitalized at over 70 million pounds.
The latest chapter in the success story begins in the autumn of 1982. Market research indicated a demand for an executive 16-bit microcomputer, a unit which could be transported easily from office to home. Market intelligence suggested no manufacturer had plans for this type of product. ACT decided to make a preemptive move by designing and manufacturing such a machine. Just nine months after the go-ahead, Project Apricot was launched to dealers in London. With more than 2,000 guests, the event was the biggest microcomputer trade gathering ever held in Europe. It was immediately apparent that once again, ACT had got it right. Well, it's very compact and it's a very beautiful looking machine. Well, it's exciting because it's British and we're looking forward to a British machine in the marketplace. We think it will be a winner. It looks a, a very, very exciting product. Um, I can't wait to get to use it myself. And I think there's a very good market for it. Um, they look a lot of very exciting future developments going on there. So we should look forward to receiving one. Clearly, the company's new factory at Glenrothes in Scotland was going to produce exactly what the trade knew the market would soon be demanding. Manufacturing is, of course, a logical part of the total computing concept. Product quality is now under ACT's direct control, using components in an innovative way that are tried, tested and of proven quality. Modifications and improvements, be they in component or software form, can be introduced as soon as they are proven. Supply can now be cost-effectively tailored to exact market requirements, and production targets can be confidently laid down. We at ACT are totally committed to producing computers in volume to the very highest standards of quality anywhere in the world. We carry out extensive tests of the components and the computer during the process of manufacture. We then put it through a very rigorous 24-hour final test, um, which tests the machine at the extreme conditions under which it can work. We then carry out um, what we call our final test, and put it in the box, dispatch it to the customer. We are very quality conscious. ACT's style of manufacture with staff interchangeability and total involvement may be unusual, but ACT has always been an unusual company, always determined to find the best method of giving its customers what they want. And though 12 months from product concept to first production is fast, even by ACT standards, the market was ready for apricot. Since the launch of Apricot, we've taken UK orders for over 10 million pounds and export orders for over 25 million. And can you deliver those orders? Yes, we've shipped 1,000 units in the first month of production, and the second 1,000 only took two further weeks. What's your ultimate target in all this? For 1984, some 75,000 units. We feel that is very realistic, both in terms of what we can manufacture and judging on incoming orders on what we can sell. Now, I suspect at this stage you're not prepared to give away any secrets, but if Apricot represents the fourth phase in ACT's story, what's going to happen next? Well, you're right, there are to be no secrets declared today. But we do have a major new product due for launch during 1984. The new product will be complementary to Apricot and will ensure that ACT achieves its goal of being number one in Europe and a major player in the World Personal Computer League. This year, ACT's group turnover increased from 20 million to 50 million pounds, with profit growth in step. Today, Apricot stands an integral part of the total computing concept, making a valuable contribution to the growth of the company, which had the foresight, the tenacity, and the resources 
to make it a reality. A company whose maturity and track record both ensure that the story of ACT will not end here. Thank you.